My name is Sébastien Lagré. I'm the creator of Le Grief Fitness and The Mega Former. I'm here today with my really good friend, Martin Garrett. Martin, thank you for coming. Martin is the movement and joint specialist. This guy is amazing. He knows everything about the body. I asked Martin to help me doing some stretches because you know when you're in the water, you're in this weightless environment, you might not feel the pressure of gravity, but there are pressure exerted on the body. You have to move your, basically you mass through the water. So it is a physical workout, you know, it is an exhaustive workout. We have here five stretches that you can do, and then we recommend you do this with your buddy, and uh, you can do it before and after each dive, and that will enhance your experience of diving, and also will limit uh, the stress that, uh, that diving has on, on the body. And overall, I think you'll have a much better uh, diving experience. So here are the five stretches. First stretch I like to see is basically we're integrating the quads into the waist because with, with the kicking and the stuff like that, most yep. people are just kicking, doing little flutter kicks. Right. And when we're trained properly, you've got a full sweeping kick. So to be able to do that, you actually have to have opening through the psoas, through the hip flexors, and the hip has to be able to do all the things the hip needs to do. And that stretch also will release some depression in that lower back, right? Absolutely. Because when I dive, you know, uh, after the first dive, I'll feel right away just this part of the, the spine will shh, kind of compress. And I'm always kind of trying to stretch my back doing uh, exercise like that, but that's, that's not gonna relieve the lower back. No, yeah. no, stretch, stretching out your hamstring is not going to do it because the reason your hamstring is maxed out is because your quads are basically pulling your hips forward, tipping your pelvis, which maximi maximizes your hamstring. Okay. Basically fully extends your hamstring. So stretching your hamstring all day, not gonna do anything. We've got to stretch the quad to be able to get um, good mobility all the way through. All right, you guys got this? All right, all right, let's do the stretch. All right, so basically what I want you to do with your partner is have him put your hand up there. Yeah. We're gonna bend this leg. I'm gonna isolate the quad here and I'm gonna reach back. I'm gonna grab it here. Now what I want you to do is I want you to rotate the hips forward. Like this? Yep, and then tip underneath. So you're pointing your tailbone at the ground. You're gonna see that that already starts yeah. to stretch that quad. Now I want you to lift your chest. There we go, now we're actually into the lower abs. Now I want you to try to extend this foot. So now I'm pushing down with my right foot. That's very important. Yes. In order to release it, I got to push down on my foot. I have to physically extend and he's blocking that foot. Right, he's I'm not pressing further. All I'm doing is holding it in a position that you found natural. And then we're gonna relax. Perfect, nice. And how long do you do the stretch for? Like a few seconds, right? Yeah, for these, for these kind of isometric stretches, you just hold them for a few seconds because what you're doing is you're contracting the belly of the muscle and as you contract the belly of the muscle, it's pulling on the, on the tendons and opening them up, okay. pulling in both directions. So that actually gives you full access. If all you're doing is strengthening, same thing with weight training. If all you're doing is strengthening the belly of the muscle, everything is concentrated in probably about at the middle third of the muscle. If you want full extension on the muscle, you've got to contract when it's already extended. Right. So when I'm extending it and now I contract this, I'm pulling from here and I'm pulling from there. Now I have the full I have the full leg available to me at all times. Where most people put the tank is they leave it sit right down on the belt. When it sits down on the belt, it's pushing against your pelvis. As it's pushing against your pelvis, you're going to lose a lot of that mobility. You're actually, with even the slightest amount of pressure on the pelvis, you're going to instinctively constantly push away from it. You'll find the same thing in people um, when they're wearing shoes. If your foot touches just a little bit, your toes will pull back and it wrecks your feet. And that quite for the stretch, you'll feel immediately a release right there in that lower back, you know. More effective than just doing this. That won't do it. That, won't, that won't do it at all. What's the next stretch? Um, next stretch, we're pretty much concentrating primarily on the pelvis. Right. The, the, the hugest part of our movement while we're, we're diving, you know, the arms are basically there to kind of guide, like right. kind of like an airplane. You're kind of using your arms for direction and then your legs for propulsion. Exactly, and as you're using your legs for propulsion, this is where all the motion is. Right. So to get the pelvis to be able to do all the things we need to be able to do, the pelvis needs to reach, it needs to extend, basically with the pelvis right. and the greater trochanter, the leg actually connects in and we want it to roll. With most people who spend all of their days seated, the, the ball and socket, the ball is basically out of the socket and that creates tension all the time. Right. That's why most people, they're always walking around right, exactly, with, yeah. the, with their butt poking out. You see it, yeah. And it makes people who don't have 
a belly look like they have a belly. Yeah, a lot of divers you see on the boats are kind of walking like almost like a, like it's like all block, basically the whole torso. They have no mobility whatsoever. Most people are just doing linear motions, but when you're in the water, that's not the only motion that's available to you. You're gonna sweep. Right. You're gonna sweep. So to be able to sweep, you want to be able to strengthen right. that hip in the socket yep. in all directions. You want to free them in the hip. Right. So the second movement is knee up. My hand over here. So this is my buddy, right? Yeah. This is the buddy stretch. So basically, we're gonna take this out and yep. take it to about 45 degrees. What we're looking for is a little resistance. Right. Not a lot. I'm not pulling out. All I'm doing is taking the weight of the leg off the ground okay. and allowing it to come to where we just have a nice yeah. natural resistance. It's not even a full stop. And now from this position, I want you to rotate the hips underneath. So scoop like that this. down. There yeah. you go. So what I'm doing with my hip, I'm going like this, right? I'm tucking yeah. under. Right We're going to point the tailbone at the ground pretty much right next to the ankle where that would yeah. be. That's where we want to point the tailbone. And now you see what that does. It, it curves you a little bit. That's why I have you now lift the chest. And what that does is that opens up the lower abs, opens up the iliacus, basically part of the hip flexor and the psoas, which is going to allow this to come out. So we, all I'm doing is lifting the weight of the leg, taking it to a comfortable place. We're accentuating the lift on the chest, tip on the waist, and now I'm gonna brace myself. My legs are slightly bent. Now I'm gonna have you push this down. I'm pushing down with my knee yep. now. And as I'm pushing down with my knee, he's kind of resisting. And I'm, I'm just keeping it from going down. And at the same time, I, tuck, I keep my tailbone tucked under, my chest open, and keep that space open between the ribs and the hips. Yeah. And that feels really good, actually. And then we let that go down. And now, if you want to check it, you could just open up and see, compare yeah. this one, now compare it to that other one. And you yeah, see so, that, that so other th one this stops. one feels a lot more uh, constricted, and this one already feels just way more open, just more fluid. It feels like this one has been greased, and this one needs to be greased. Right there. Yeah, Good. yeah. Excellent. so if you think of the old school bicycle with the caliper brakes, if the brakes are rubbing just a bit, you can still function, right. but that brake is gonna slow you down. So by the end of the day, you're going to be sore. And right. once you get sore, your body will compensate by trying to shift away from the pain rather than just trying to open it up. Right. You'll shift away from the pain even if it creates you know, a more manageable pain in a different part of the body. Hence the lower back starts hurting when our hips are out of balance. The third movement, this time I'm going to lift that leg up. Ooh. Now we're gonna, cross, we're gonna cross over. All right. Oh my God. So now I love you, Martin. <laughs> so now we're stretching. <laughs> that feels awesome, actually. We're stretching into the glutes. So stretching that whole area right here. Yep. So keep my tailbone tucked under, pointing to the ground, chest open, yep. keeping the space open between the ribs and the hips. And then he's pulling my knee slightly. Yeah, and yep. I'll have you drop this arm. And then drop this arm on the outside. Oh, yep. right here. There so. you go. There, there we go. go. There we go. And now I'm gonna have you push down again. There you go. And then I'm pushing down right over here, and that feels really good. So same thing. Now I'm pushing down with the right knee. I'm pushing straight down, and he's resisting it, keeping my tailbone tucked under, facing the, the floor, keeping the space open, the ribs and the hips, and you can feel all this area just releasing. Feels really good. Good. Perfect. That gives you motion on the inside. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, so we've got this angle, yep. we've got this angle, yep. and what you'll also notice is that when you have this and this, all of a sudden your balance is so much better. Right. But what the balance shows is that everything is nicely lined up. When your muscles are balanced, you have more efficiency in the movement, so you're not going to tire as much, Absolutely. you know, and then you will actually, uh, because you have more efficiency in the movement, you might actually consume less oxygen when you're underwater and you'll have a better dive, you know. If you can't see fighting because things are not moving you know, quite right, you know, you're going to exhaust yourself more. Absolutely. And if I can ask you to absolutely freeze, don't move. Yep. See how this foot now is nicely lined up with the knee? Yep. Perfect. This is anatomically correct. Right. We haven't corrected this one yet. See how it feathers out? Oh, that's right. Yep. Yep. And it, it feathers out because as the, as the hip comes out, it takes the IT band with it, and we end up walking like a duck. That's right. And the more we walk like the duck, the more we challenge the knees. So walking like a duck or swimming like a duck, if we're challenging the knees, the knee is a, basically it's like a floating hinge. We've got a little bit of leeway to the side, but effectively it's, it's a hinge like any car. Imagine opening up your car door, twisting right. it and expecting it to close right. right. Same thing happens with the knee. Fourth stretch. Um, again, we'll stay on the same leg, and again, without even, without even thinking about it, this leg is staying nice and lined up. Yeah. This one is 
feathering out just slightly because yep. it's, it's pulled. The fourth stretch, well, again, we'll stay on exactly the same leg. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna open and we're gonna integrate all of this. Okay. Because again, most, most people who are swimming think they're doing a linear motion, but you're not. Right. You're actually moving like this. And for that, you need the hip to rotate. Yeah. Because if the hip doesn't rotate, you're gonna borrow a little flexibility from the knee, which is gonna cause inflammation. Right. Because you're gonna to torque that knee in the wrong way. So this last one, again, knee straight up. Drop the arm on the outside of my arm. I'll put it around me. There you go. There we go. Oh, that feels good. Now with this one, we got to tip the hips. Yeah. You see that allows me to get up about yep. 15 degrees. I can also do it this way, but yep. we're, we're lining basically the knee up with the chest. And now I want you to pull down again. So what this does, this integrates the, the quads into the glutes, and we let that soften. Good. The same thing, right? I'm pushing on with my knee, and he's holding it. And again, still, I'm, I'm, I'm still um, uh, keeping my tailbone tucked under. Facing down and the chest open and keeping this whole uh, space open. But it's very important to push against the resistance because that's what really uh, 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 turns off and turns on the muscle. It's that resistance in the stretch. Uh, last one for the neck, you can pretty much do on your own. And basically we're just gonna grab, I'll, I'll face this way. We're gonna grab, pull that way off to the side and you're just gonna grab and basically bend in the direction of the bent elbow. Good, so we're taking ear to shoulder, and then we're gonna drop the chin down, and that's gonna open up all of that, because as you pull that arm over, mm -hmm. that tightens this up, so you're gonna have all of that. And then very slowly, we're gonna have you look up from the exact same position, and then come on up, and then straight ahead. Uh, a lot of people will do the, the rotations, the grinding, absolutely inappropriate. If you look at the mechanics of the neck, that is not, the neck is not designed to do this. It's going to make the tight parts of your neck absolutely tighter. It's gonna make the loose parts of your neck hypermobile, and it's gonna create that kind of situation where you're doing it constantly. If you see the people crack their necks all the time. Right, I love the stretches because they're very quick. You know, I mean, you saw it usually for a few seconds, and you do the stretch with your buddy, and you have a better experience while diving. All right, those are your five stretches. And what we're doing is we are enhancing your diving experience by giving you full access to your body, how it moves. And we're also protecting the joints, protecting you from injuries, protecting you from anything that is going to limit your ability or screw you up from being able to dive in the future.